So why is it that there are so many foreign criminals in China? And how do they get away with it? This is no exaggeration. I have met more like real criminals and not just petty criminals. I mean like serious criminals in China than I have anywhere else in the world. And it'll make sense because China is the kind of place where you can reinvent yourself, right? Once you step off that plane, you're in a completely alien place. Nobody speaks your language. Nobody knows much about the culture where you're from. You know, nobody really knows what you've done in the past. There's no backstory. There's no one there that knows you. And you can basically just start off with a clean slate. So let me uh, explain to you what happens with foreigners in general. When you meet other foreigners in China, it's usually sort of in a restaurant or around a bar table, something like that. It's usually drinking involved. I'd say 99.9% .9 of the time. Um, and that's when the stories come out. You see, nobody wants to just be labeled as an everyday English teacher. There's nothing wrong with being an English teacher, something I've uh, said before in the past, but it has a stigma attached to it in China. Obviously, it's the low end of the jobs because to get that kind of job, you really don't need any qualifications. You just have to be a foreigner, preferably white, but you know, it doesn't matter if you're white or not. Oh, wow, it's such a beautiful spot. Just give me a second, guys. I, uh, I'll whip out the handicam so you can see what I'm talking about. Sorry, I'm in a rush, so I can't like stop and pull off for a long time, but yeah. Let's see what we got ahead of us. There we go, beautiful beachside. You know, I love coming down here to Southern California. It's gorgeous. The coastline is amazing. Anyway, sorry about that. <clears throat> so, as soon as you uh, get to these tables and you sit down with other foreigners and you're having a, a drink and a chat, obviously, you, one of the questions you usually ask people is, um, what is it that you do, you know? And, uh, of course, they don't want to say English teacher. Sorry, give me a second here. This car has no power steering and it's very difficult to turn. <laughs> um, so what'll happen is they'll make up a story. See, they'll either have been some kind of hotshot ex-military personnel. I've heard it everything from like a, a sniper to a, an ex-special forces to, you know, some, some other military thing. That's quite popular. And then you get the other camp who are, you know, used to trade on Wall Street or they were the CEO of a finance company or something along those lines and uh, the story usually goes that they're just taking a, a couple of years off in China to learn the language because you know China is the next big economic miracle and they want a piece of that action so they want to learn the culture and learn the language so that they too can tap into this potential endless wealth so that's the other kind you get um, you also get the people who try to like uh, beef up their their job title. So, for instance, a uh, kindergarten teacher will suddenly become an educational consultant. You know, I do a... how's it going? Sorry, as I was saying, a kindergarten teacher will suddenly become like a, an educational consultant or a um, branch manager of a, an educational this or that. You know, there's always some kind of nonsense people can spin. That's very believable. And, you know, I'm guilty of that too, in a way, with my whole training doctors thing. But, you know, after having worked my way up the ladder, I started down where everyone does kind of teaching kindergarten and uh, it's not fun trust me anyone who's ever done that will know what I'm talking about I moved up to teaching sort of uh, high school students and then young adults and then you know sort of started to teach business English to you know uh, young professionals and uh, I got the opportunity to actually start training doctors I was hired by a medical training company and I exclusively used to train doctors in uh, you know, English and uh, medical terminology and of course the hospital rules and etiquette which was the most important part, all the cultural faux pas they might have when they go overseas. So yeah, my whole thing was, yeah, I train doctors and uh, what, do you, what do you train them in? Oh, I do English and, you know, medical terminology and etiquette and culture. So that was my shtick. 
and it kind of gives you a feeling of pride to not just be a run-of-the-mill English teacher you know what I mean and like I've said before there's nothing wrong with being an English teacher of course those who take it seriously and do a fantastic job are some of the most noble professionals in the world you've no idea the kind of effort they put in to like educating young children and uh, helping people start new lives and things like that I've got nothing against English teachers whatsoever but everybody knows that getting an English teaching job you don't really need to be qualified so that's why a lot of people like to avoid that uh, moniker but now where do the criminals uh, fit into all of this well it's kind of simple I'm a youtuber right and I have been for what 12 years or something stupid amount of time and uh, the last time I did any doctor training or English teaching or anything like that was more than six or seven years ago um, but being a youtuber I'd always have a camera on me right so I'd go and meet up with people we'd have a couple drinks they tell me their stories about being some kind of high-flying investment banker or whatever it is they are and I'd be like cool man I'm making a video about XYZ do you mind being on camera and that's all of a sudden where their true colors would show because they'd be like uh, no <laughs> they'd be like sorry um, no I don't like to be on camera or something which is you know all good and well I do respect people's privacy and stuff but I always find it a little weird and the more you get to know people the more the truth starts to come out and it'll be like yeah they don't want to be on camera because number one they they owe alimony and they're escaping their like ex-wife and kids they have a problem with the law they've got some kind of a, a criminal record uh, you know and it's it's actually a lot more common than you might think uh, there have been high-profile cases you know like that um, American ex-cop who allegedly murdered his wife and molested a 10 year old girl and then fled to China he was in China for like 13 years 15 years something like that um, teaching at a university okay you got to understand it teaching in a university is a step up from your average kindergarten teacher it's a step up from uh, you know a training center usually you would expect them to vet people a little better but no this uh, murderer was teaching you know sort of young adults and, and kids presumably in a Chinese university so anyway let's talk about some of the sort of personal criminals that I know criminals I know personally I should say um, it's not an accolade or anything uh, I'll list off a couple right I know two guys in Shenzhen who actually run businesses one's a manager of like a, a bar the other, the other one runs like a, a bar slash restaurant type thing and uh, I met these guys years ago you know these are guys have been in China long you know so sort of same time as me and um, for all intents and purposes these guys are fantastic like really nice guys straight up friendly um, nice to talk to hang on ouch okay so we're talking about like I consider them to be you know fairly normal everyday guys and we got along fairly well but the foreigner scene in uh, China is kind of toxic you know it's kind of like a little gossip rag or gossip magazine as soon as something goes wrong or someone doesn't like someone like all the rumors start flying or all the sort of truths start to surface found out the one guy has actually a convicted felon for kidnapping and child abuse and he skipped out on bail and came to China and he's been there for many years um, the other guy is also like got fraud charges so he's like stuck there he's like supposed to be facing all sorts of uh, you know courts and things like that but no he's been in China as an English teacher for ever, forever uh, another guy I know who's a music musician uh, who I used to ride with who you know I used to think is a fantastic guy. I still think I still think these guys are like if if I were to judge them on their character having met them I would still say they're just average everyday guys you know that I can get along with um, but you know we got drunk one one night and he ended up telling telling us how he assaulted a police officer because he tried to chase uh, try to run away from a DUI and the police officer grabbed onto his car and he dragged a cop down the road and all this kind of crap so he's got felonies and, and whatnot I mean that's the tip of the iceberg I've met tons of people who've got drug related and I've got a very good story actually a positive story about a criminal um, coming up at the end but sorry grinding gears you have a lot of these kind of situations where you meet these foreigners who are just actually serious criminals people 
with felonies and proper convictions and things like that living in China. So why, why is it that they're allowed to do this? I mean, surely China, I've talked about it before, the cops keep a close eye on the foreigners there. You know, they did to me all the time, come and check, check up on me and check my passport. So why is it that these criminals are allowed to slip in? Well, to be completely honest with you, it's because of the disconnected nature of how China works. If you go and live in a little, little smaller town, um, it's all about the people you know locally. It's all about the connections. You can get away with stuff. But I should probably just tell you now the story I was kind of teasing about a minute ago about the positive story, okay? Here's a guy I met. I met him, uh, oh, what, five, six, six years ago? Uh, something like that. Seemed like a very nice average guy. Um, he came over, we used to hang out, you know, we became friends, part of a circle of friends. Really nice guy. Anyway, he approached me one day. I'm just going to go down this road. I want to see the seat. He approached me one day and approached a couple of us and said, listen, guys, I have a criminal record back home. I'm applying for my work visa. What am I going to do? Now, you see, this is another reason why so many criminals can get there. Since China opened up these 10-year tourist visas to Americans, Canadians, Australians, there's a couple of countries that they um, have like a 10-year tourist visa in before you freak out it just means you're allowed to go there uh, it's valid for 10 years you can go for I think it's 90 days some nationalities it's 60 days so what will happen is you go in there for 60 days or 90 days you have to leave and then come back in but it's a broken system because I know people who've been doing this for you know over 10 years where they just pop out come back in so oh my my 30 day stay is almost over just go into Hong Kong come back in same day it gets renewed for another 60 or 90 days so they just keep doing that I mean that's not very efficient at least from the Chinese government side surely they they should be suspicious if someone has been on a tourist visa for 10 years straight anyway you don't need a criminal background check when you get a tourist visa and so a lot of these criminals they get their tourist visa get into China make all their dodgy little connections and you know business partners and whatnot and then from there they can take it because then the law can be bent and they may have a friend who has a friend in the police or whatever and, and figure things out if they were to change their visa which a lot of them don't to be honest a lot of them actually just stick with the tourist visa and work illegally on it uh, it's pretty common anyway um, I'm getting beyond the point here so this guy he's like look I found a job and I need to they, they want to hire me I'm gonna get a work visa but I have a criminal record what can I do so he was asking us and we we're kind of all like we didn't really know what to say because you know you've got a criminal record you've got a criminal record and now at least well it's been for at least five years now China started to get pretty strict about checking sorry big truck yeah so China got really strict about checking your your criminal background you had to prove you had to get a letter from your government you know stating that you're not a criminal like a background check type thing anyway in the end what he ended up doing was he just got like a letterhead from the whatever Department of Justice or whatever it was he just searched online and he found a letterhead and he made his own criminal background check he saw what they looked like he kind of copied it he printed it out and he handed it in with his paperwork and guess what he got the visa he got the work visa this is I'm guessing what I have to be accurate with this I think this was about five years ago all right maybe they made it more strict now but I know at that time they were incredibly strict um, because you know I had to provide my criminal background check as well with my work visa renewal they actually started to retroactively um, anyone who had a work visa when it was up for renewal you had to now like supply your criminal background check because it actually wasn't a requirement before uh, when I first got my my work visa which must have been I don't know 20 2009 2010 somewhere there I got my first work visa I didn't have to supply a criminal background check but then they like notified me before you renew your work permit you're gonna have to supply us with a criminal background check anyway so what I'm saying is the guy made his own one on his computer in his apartment and it got accepted and he got his work visa which is then extendable because once once you're in the system as not being a criminal 
you're in the system, right? So you can just keep extending it every year. Uh, so that's how he got he um, got in. But the reason I say it's a good story is the guy had drug-related charges, right? He yeah he got arrested for taking drugs and he had to go to like rehab and a psych ward and something like that. He's got quite a long history, but it was all drug-related. So he's not like a serious criminal that's hurting people or anything like that, right? Um, and China actually was kind of like a reformation for the guy. He changed his life around. He became like a, such a fantastic bloke. Um, if you know, you, you know I'm talking about it. You know, you're watching this if you are. This is, I'm not trying to take the piss about you, man. I'm trying to... Um, praise you for what you've done because you you very much impressed me you know especially i've got this like shitty opinion of drugs nobody likes my opinion of drugs but you know you've changed my mind in a lot of ways so anyway the guy got married had a kid started a business like um his whole life got changed around absolutely fantastic like what a solid bloke um but once again that's a, a criminal with a proper criminal history like a serious criminal history, um, getting away with living, working, um, starting a business and everything in China. It's kind of what I'm trying to say here. And now I'm going in freaking circles. Give me a second, I've got to do a U-turn here. Can I U-turn here? No. Oh man, it's one of these, it's one of these stupid roads where they don't let you U-turn for like a, a million miles. Anyway. So that's why it is that you get so many criminals and they become blazing because once you're in the system in China, you know, China doesn't have extradition treaties with other countries. So let's say you are like wanted for something or other. I guess if it's something really serious like murder, like that guy who they eventually did sort something out with that murder, murderer guy. But if you're just like a normal everyday low-profile criminal with a felony or whatever they're not going to um, do anything the, the American government's not gonna be like hey man freaking no u-turn can these guys just stop sorry guys I'm getting frustrated here um, <laughs> the uh, American government's not going to come and try to get get you arrested or anything like that you know if do you feel what I'm saying <laughs> you find that these people start to praise the CCP and the, the government that they, you know, of the country that they found safe harbor in, which makes absolute sense because if you're a criminal it's escaping your past and you come to China and you get this kind of fresh start and on top of the fresh start, um, <laughs> someone's giving me a, a shout out for the car, and on top of the fresh start you get to enjoy like a free open lifestyle, something that where you don't have to look over your shoulder all the time worry about the cops coming to arrest you on your felony warrant it makes sense right so of course you're gonna love the country of course you're gonna tout the CCP for this amazing little safe haven that keeps you out of the clutches of the law now I personally believe that everybody should be given a second shot you know I've made plenty of mistakes in my life and um, if I just given up and said well you know that's it I'm just gonna lie down and let the world take me over I wouldn't have gotten anywhere in life you know and I do believe that people make mistakes and we should be able to give them a second chance obviously there's a limit to that don't murder someone or you know molest someone or do do something terrible like that but you know what I mean people do make mistakes um, and I don't think a person's whole life should be ruined because they I don't know knocked over a mailbox when they were a teenager or uh, got a DUI once or something like that you know what I mean um, but there is something very concerning about this whole China thing and that is that the criminals are often in contact with children and I mean I told you I used to teach kindergarten right and they used to get sort of teachers in all the time and kindergarten teachers are usually well, at least back then anyway usually very transient you know you'll have them for a month or two and then they'll just disappear they usually come in um, work very shoddily turn up to work hungover or you know high or whatever it is and then um, a month later they get their paycheck and then they bounce and they you'd never see them again because a lot of those kindergartens hire illegals um, and you know people on tourist or business visas in fact you can even read a lot of the ads they're like we're not gonna supply a visa for you 
So you get the situation where you've got these like, I don't know, pond scum hanging out with little five-year-old kids. And even worse, the kindergarten I used to work at, and most kindergartens, the, the kids take these naps during the day, during the lunch, like a two-hour nap. They have lunch and then they sleep for about an hour and a half. And the teachers usually sleep in the same room as the kids. And I walked in once with like one of these like fat, horrible looking old men, uh, dodgy geezers that always had like cocaine on his nose and shit like that. And he's lying there and he had a bunch of kids like all hugging him and stuff. And I was like, this, China's just not prepared to deal with pedophiles and, and molesters and stuff like that. They just don't have the mentality. If you're a teacher, you immediately garner respect from the parents and the students because that's Chinese society and Chinese culture is the teacher is always held you know with a very high level of respect and so these guys get away with all sorts of crap and of course they're never questioned because hey it's teacher and uh, it really upset me you know there's no recourse either you can't you can complain I did plenty of times to like the headmaster or the headmistress and say listen I don't think it's a good idea that the adults are sleeping with the kids together, especially this guy doesn't look that right to me, you know. But they don't do anything about it and you, you just end up, you know, fighting a losing battle. I'm going to pull over here for a second, guys, before I sign off. Let's, uh, let's do a proper sign off. I know I'm in like a bus stop, so let me put my hazard lights on and hopefully I don't get into, into any issues. But I kind of wanted to do a little sign off. And I'll... Uh, grab the handy cam and do that you know I wish you could smell the the salty sea air it's beautiful out here absolutely gorgeous you know at the end of the day I've always tried to warn my Chinese friends that if they have a kid in kindergarten or you know primary school even universities try to meet the teacher, get a feel for them, a proper feel for them. Make sure that the, the school has done a criminal background check like a proper one because so many of these scumbags have slipped through the cracks and they're there by legacy. A lot of them have got these um, teaching jobs in universities and stuff and they've had them for so many years that, you know, they're entrenched now and they've got all the connections. The thing is, the last thing you want is for your kids to be in the hands of a, a convicted rapist or pedophile or kidnapper or whatever it is. Uh, genuinely, I'm very concerned just from my own experiences. Anyway, guys, thank you for joining me on this, uh, this beautiful day. I finally got a chance to see some sun and to take the Corvette out. I've been promising that for a while. Um, still a long way to go. There's a hell of a history about that car. <laughs> It is um, something that I have been putting together on a shoestring budget for the last couple of months. And um, you'll see it in our new channel. Guys, I'm going to show you a little teaser. I'd like you to go over and subscribe because very soon we'll be dropping our first episode. And you're going to love it. If you love cars and if you just like the banter between Sea Milk and myself, you're going to love this new channel. So please go check it out. And I'll see you on the next one. And until then, you know the drill as always. Just like the beautiful, salty sea air down here in Southern California, stay awesome. We want to go and find cool cars that, you know, would usually be out of the range of a high schooler to buy. Fix them up for real cheap. And then I will sell it for a profit. That's probably why the car's crashed. I don't think it's legal to drive without a door. It's not a mail truck. This is the worst car I've ever driven in my life. Definitely gonna lose a lot of money on this one. I can't believe how much money we made on this car.
level. I can't see shit. You need to go to the hospital. <laughs> this car is not worth it. Jesus Christ, man.